There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am finally doing the Booktube Top Tens tag. This is an original tag by Jason of Old Blues Chapter and Verse. And I didn't think I was going to do it, but I've seen in the last week Britta do it and Amy of Amy Poole do it. And it made me kind of reconsider. So here's the deal. I don't really have a top ten. I have a top three. And those are pretty fixed. And then depending on which day you catch me on... Um, I will pull out another seven, not randomly, but it just depends on the kind of day I'm having and what's kind of up for me, what books I've remembered recently or whatever. And to me, this is not only my idiosyncrasies, I think it's kind of basic elemental psychology. In an earlier life, I was an incessant journal keeper, diary keeper. Uh, don't do it anymore. Hope to start it again. But I also taught journal writing workshops for personal growth. And one of the methods, it's quite Jungian, and too bad about the Jungian part, but it still was, I thought, many aspects of this journal writing method were uh, quite profound. And that is Ira Progroff's The Intensive Journal. I'll put a, the title in the show notes if you're interested in checking it out. And one of the journal writing methods that he taught was called Stepping Stones, which was at any time about any issue to do a list of 10 stepping stones of how you got to this place in your life uh, on whatever issue it was. And that that list of 10 events would vary day to day, hour to hour, because our relationship to our past is always changing. And then that would give rise to a whole bunch of other journaling techniques and whatever. So enough about journaling. But to me, my attitude towards my 10 favorite books is exactly the same. My relationship to my past reading is always changing. And in fact, there's very few books on here that I haven't read very recently within the last three years. There's a very few that go back further. And the reading that I've done more recently is what's alive for me, at least today. And also, there are almost no classics here. My relationship to the classic literature that I've read is in a completely separate compartment. There's one book here, possibly, that might arguably be called a classic, but otherwise they're all quite modern. I'm going to go from my top one down to my number, from number one to number ten, and really only number ones, two, and three are ranked. The rest of them could be interchangeably in terms of my favorites, all right? And my top three, I have talked about a lot, or recently, so I'm, I'm not going to talk about them too much. My best, the best novel I've read in my whole life is Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeleine Tien. I believe it's a 2016 novel, won quite a few awards, at least in Canada, nominated for a whole pile more, including The Man Booker. And I have talked enough about this, but this is numero uno. My second most favorite novel that I've ever read is A Constellation of Vital Phenomena by Anthony Mara. I've talked about it not so much recently, but, you know, I'm not, I don't need to talk about it uh, at all. Let's keep this short and sweet, shall we? So that's number two. Number three is a novel that I just read last month, The Known World by Edward P. Jones. I have a full review on my channel. I'll put a link in the show notes. I read it as an ebook, audiobook co combo, and promptly ordered a hardcover edition because it's one of my favorite books. I have to have a paper copy, and I don't need to say any more about that. So those are my top three. The rest of them are fairly interchangeable in terms of order, and I would say Barbara Pym's debut. So this is the one that's arguably a classic. I believe it was published in 1950, Some Tame Gazelle. I love Barbara Pym. I love almost all of her novels that I've read. And this one is probably my favorite today. If I filmed this video tomorrow, one of her others, my top three by her, no, I won't include them, but that's what her debut is just hilarious and profoundly sad in perfect balance. Another top read of last year. My top read of last year, in fact, was Women Talking by Miriam Taves. I have a full review of this. American booktubers have started discovering it since it was published in the U.S. in January or late December. I read it <clears throat> last summer, I believe. 
it's better than The Handmaid's Tale and has stuck with me in a way that's the positive energy coming out of this book about such a dark subject, rape within a Mennonite cult and how the women bind themselves to each other and discuss what they might do to respond to this violence that has been perpetrated on them by members of their own community. It's just gut-wrenching and just beautiful. Miriam Taves, one of my favorite writers. My favorite Japanese novel is The Makioka Sisters by Junichiro Tanazaki. I have a full review of this. I absolutely loved it. I don't like most Japanese literature, let's be honest. It doesn't speak to me, but this one really does. This is just a sprawling novel about four sisters. And uh, somebody asked me, my friend Lindy asked me the other day, is it kind of like a Jane Austen novel? Yes, but there's some feisty women in here that are independent-minded, so it's not your typical love plot. Matchmaking is a central preoccupation of the book, but the characters overshadow the plot in a way that's just delicious. This was published in the night just before the outbreak of World War II and is set at that same time. This is a wonderful, imperfect, and powerful novel from what is now Pakistan, an Urdu novel, The One Who Did Not Ask by Alta Fatima, translated from Urdu by Roxana Ahmed. And I read this over a three or four month period last year, and I have a full review about my imperfect reading of it, and it has stayed with me right here. So this belongs on my top 10 list. The only nonfiction book that has made my top 10 list, as I have created it today, is from South Africa, Country of My Skull, a 1998 memoir by Anchi Crow. She is an Afrikaner journalist who, after Mandela's release from prison, and she was a journalist covering the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and has written a deeply personal, poetic, beautiful, searing memoir about all of that. It's one of the most beautiful nonfiction books I've ever read. It was made into a very bad movie. Don't watch the movie. Do read the book. It's one of the last books I read in the last millennium, and I absolutely love it. The One in a Million Boy by Monica Wood, also from 2016, I believe. I'm not going to double-check that. A wonderful novel about the friendship between a, an, a 104-year-old woman who's sharp as a tack, and uh, maybe he's eight years old, a boy that's on the autistic spectrum, but they have a wonderful relationship, and then suddenly he drops dead of some strange neurological something. And then the boy's father, who's divorced from the mother and had been estranged from the boy, fulfills the remainder of this boy's Boy Scout volunteer commitment with the 104-year-old lady, Una Vitkus. And it's the story of their relationship as well. And it's so heartwarming and funny. And, you know, there's so many things that could go wrong. And in fact, I did think that the, the backstory of the 104-year-old woman, I mean, 104 years, people, it could have been shortened, but I don't care. The idiosyncratic intimacy that is achieved between the main characters is I absolutely love and I mean they seem to be the only one on booktube talking about it can we change that people I love this novel this is uh, one of the few gay novels worth reading Dancer from the Dance by Andrew Holler and I believe it was published in 1978 and I read it in the early 90s perhaps late 80s it explores the gay life pre-AIDS in New York City, Fire Island and the bathhouses and stuff. And that's fascinating, but also balances that out with some of the main characters' search for intimacy and not necessarily heteronormative romantic intimacy, but just friendship. Because of the blend of all of those energies, this novel to me is, like I say, it's one of the few worth reading and it's the most important one, I think. I picked up this used copy the other day and I plan to reread it. All right, so... Like I say, maybe I'll film another version of this video tomorrow just to, just to F up Jason's statistics because I'd probably come up with at least a slightly different list. But that's what I've got for today. Short and sweet, but thanks for watching.